greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room. Today's video is about English paper piecing. And I actually spent two years piecing by hand with a needle and thread, one inch hexes. And the truth about this video is I actually started filming it over a year ago when I initially started filming videos for my channel. At the time, I thought I would finish the quilt in a few months and put the video out. It's been a long time, so long in fact, that I've decided to refilm this introduction just so that it makes a little bit more sense. So basically for this video, we're gonna go back in time a little bit and you may get confused about the timelines, it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is it. this quilt has taken me two years to make and the quilt top is finished on this day and I'm gonna finish it. But first, let's go back in time and watch the journey from about a year ago until now. And just like the quilt itself, the video may be a little bit patchworky. I've went on a journey both in quilting and literally around the world and in terms of the video making and editing skills and so forth. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's go. Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room and in today's episode of Dave's Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room and in today's video we will be discussing my English paper piecing quilt. I have been working on this quilt for I think coming up on a year. I think I started in spring of last year and it's now soon going to be spring of this year. So that's how time works and <laughs> that's a year. This is made completely with hand sewing, needle and thread, hand stitching. I started this last year when I was on a work trip and I was in a hotel. So I was looking for a project that I could do in a hotel and this was it. I sat up for hours doing an English paper piecing. You can do a million different things or you can make a crazy quilt. This is halfway in between pattern and crazy because I did random chunks of pattern as you can see here and I will show you it as we go along in the video. This sucker is gonna be huge. I don't have a goal size in mind. I'm thinking that I'll just keep going until it feels right. I love a project like this because this is something that you live with. It's not a weekend project. It's something that has traveled with me, even if I don't bring the whole big thing with me. Of course, it wasn't always big, but I work in chunks and I bring this with me. Now you may be wondering, Dave, why do you have a very stylish 90s lunchbox? This is my hexi kit. And I bring this with me when I stay in hotels. It's pretty big. I actually do have smaller versions of this. I flew across an ocean last year and um, that was a very long flight where I was the only one on the flight or there was like 10 people on the flight. I brought a smaller version of this in my backpack and then I had this in my checked baggage. This basically has pretty much everything I need. These are ones that I'm working on. This is my thread, needles, a scissor. This scissor, I recommend getting one under four inches because you can bring this on an airplane. This is all my two and a half inch squares. I do not fussy cut every single one because that would have taken so much additional time. And especially because I'm not always in Dave's craft room when I do this. I'm sometimes in the hotel and I just have a scissors. So I don't focus on making them exact, neither exactly two and a half inches, nor do I make them like hexagon shaped. I just make them a square because it works just fine. These are the actual hexes. So these are fabric just basted on. I use those to put these together. And then I put these together and you make the huge quilt. I have all the memories. I remember like where I did all the things. Like I put this one together in a cabin that I was staying in in Taos, New Mexico. This was my old house. Like any of the ones with windmills, there's fabric with windmills on it. I did those in the airplane over the ocean. So there's memories from my life and everywhere I've been in the last year on this quilt. It also at some point became a goal to make a whole quilt with nothing but a needle and thread. I will be quilting this by hand. Of course, I've quilted many quilts by hand, but I've never pieced them by hand until this one. I'm gonna do everything by hand. Even the binding, even the back is not gonna be pieced. All that being said, I have to put this caveat in. There are certain sections, like let me show you one. This is a scrap quilt. I'll take scraps from anything. 
This is a good example. These fabrics right here were pieced by machine. This was had been pieced when I got it. So some of the chunks were pieced, but as far as putting the quilt top together and putting everything together, it's all by hand. This was an early section too, these um, emojis. I put, I think I did this in my old bedroom. So, ooh, the Dave mug, my mom got me this Dave mug. So let me show you the Hexi kit. I got, I started and I got on a tangent. This is the Hexi kit, two and a half inch squares. Hexies. These are the cardstock papers that I use. I used to use glue. These were glue basted. I no longer use glue to base them. I do this method, which I'll show you. I sew the paper onto the cardstock. The reason I do that is because when I pull the papers out, if I glue them on, there's so much glue on there that I end up ruining the paper but when I pull it out, and even though it is washable glue, like that's a lot of glue to have in my quilt over time as more and more and more and more and more glue is crusty. And I know that it will come out, but will it all come out like right away? You know what I mean? Or is it gonna like be weird and gross? Like, so I, I just decided to stop using the glue. The majority of that quilt was put together with glue basting, but I no longer do that method. So I'll just go ahead and show you from beginning to end how we do it. For this first part of basting, you should probably use a thread that you don't really like because we're just gonna throw it away anyway. Tie a knot on the end, put your fabric in it, fold it over, and then we just bring our needle right over the fold. And then fold the next one over And just do that. I can do this. I've measured before. I can do it in under a minute. And that's it. And then I just bring it right through the middle of it. Cut it. And that's that. I don't need to fasten that string on the end because again, we are going to take it off. It'll hold together until I need it. So next I'll show you how to put these together. So we are going to need nine and I choose these at random every time. For this section, for this part, I'm gonna thread the needle and then I double it over on itself. So I'm working with a double thickness and I tie the knot on the end of it. So I'll just show you how I do it. Take two, again, I'm choosing at random and I'm not paying any attention. Even if they are matching, uh, I still will choose them. I start at the end, there's a knot here, see? I start at the end and just work my way up the thing. This is another reason why I've chosen to do thread basting rather than glue basting is because the needle goes through better and I find that there's like, I'm kind of going through it at the end, just the fabric, not the paper. Whereas when I was gluing with it, I was going through the paper too. And I didn't like that. This, my needle glides through it better. There's no glue. So this is the key part, um, is when you get to the end. Because what do we do now? If I want to add this on here, and I sew it this way, at some point I'm going to have to go back and do this. So what I do is this. I add it on, and with my needle I do, this is about a quarter, a half an inch long stitch towards the end, two stitches, that's all I do. And then I come back down this way. And that way I'm doing both sides of the hexi that I'm adding onto it at one time and I do not have to cut my thread and tie a knot. I find that those places where you do that are uh, where it tends to be the weakest, especially in this where the knots at the end of the hexi can come undone. When I do it this way, there's no need to cut, to tie a knot and cut your thread. You can just carry on for as long as the thread goes. See, now we have this shape. See that? And all we're gonna do is fold this one and keep sewing right along. 
I could sit there and do this for hours, and I surely have before. This is kind of a more productive way for me to sit in front of the TV, because ultimately you're still sitting on your butt, but it is more productive in my view. This brings me to the reason why I decided to make this video right now is because I will be leaving this week for another work trip and staying in the hotel, and this is coming along pretty fast. And you know, as you can see, I'm doing this as I talk to you. It really doesn't require that much thought. Look how much thread I have left. And I have to do one more little row. I'm not gonna make it, I'm gonna tie it off. So this is a good point. When I tie it off, I learned this early on. I'm gonna do a couple of back stitches, just like you do on your sewing machine. I'm gonna go backwards three or so stitches and then tie the knot. And to tie the knot, I just one, two, three, and then pull it tight. The reason I go back like that is because it makes it stronger. Um, I didn't used to do that, and I found that in those places, sometimes the um, knot would come out because there is tension on it. So that's why I, I do that, and that works pretty good. It doesn't, they never come out anymore. So there we have it. In just that short amount of time, I've made a flower. Now let's add on our last piece. Doesn't matter which side I do this to, I kind of flip back and forth. My trip, I'm going on Wednesday. I'm gonna be going to the Philippines. I've never been to the Philippines before. So this is my, my um, I guess it's a parallelogram. That's that. So I'm gonna pack up my, this. I'm not sure whether I'll bring the whole thing in my suitcase. I guess I'll, just, I'll see how much room I have in my suitcase, whether I bring that whole thing or whether I just come back with a stack of these. I plan to work on this in the hotel. I will be working a lot, so there's no telling how much of it I will get done. So that's that. We'll see you when it's um, when I come back from the Philippines, and we'll see how much bigger it's gotten. So I'm here in the Philippines, and this is my mixed spaghetti. Only available in the Philippines, and that's not tomato sauce. That is banana ketchup. Greetings people, so we're back from the Philippines and it's gotten longer a little bit. I mean, it's a rough edge down there on the bottom, but, and also wider, which was not part of the original plan, but since coming back from the Philippines, I have decided this is gonna be king size, I decided, which means it has a long ways to go. So I wanna have it big enough to go on a king size bed as well as hang off the sides a little bit. So it's got to be huge. Yeah, the progress is ongoing. All right, guys, so this is the update on the EPP Hexi Quilt from Tokyo. I'm here in Tokyo. However, it is not everything I dreamed of because on the day that I landed at the airport, I tested positive for COVID and I was whisked away to quarantine for a week in this strange apartment that is definitely haunted. Like it is very creepy at night and I'm pretty sure I'm on the only person on this floor. So it's like very, very quiet and very haunted. I'm surprised I'm still alive. I have recovered from COVID at this point. My quarantine ended yesterday. The first few days of it were very hard and uh, very symptomatic. Now I'm okay. I'm at the end of the quarantine. Obviously I had my hexa kit with me and I had two handkerchiefs, which I cut up and I made three rosettes, a big one and two small ones. And those might be the last, um, well, this a lie. I still have three more weeks in Tokyo. So um, I will still probably add more rosettes. I don't really know yet. Um, I've just been binge watching Stargate Atlantis and doing EPP. I didn't want to film while I was sick. I didn't really film anything. I just did, you know, it's a lot of laying around and in and out of sleep. And um, the furniture here, there's no dishes. And uh, a coworker had to bring me groceries. I was able to order a pizza. I'm happy to be alive and happy to be out of COVID now. I still have, I have to work this upcoming week now that I've recovered from COVID. After that, I've, 
planned two weeks of doing touristy things since I'm here and everything. I should be safe from, you know, from COVID second time so I can go see the Studio Ghibli Museum and everything else like that. And um, the Fabric Town, I will definitely be going to the Fabric Town in Tokyo. So stay tuned. So I'm here in my Tokyo apartment. Um, it's really just a bed and a couch and a kitchenette and a bathroom. And um, today I went to Nippori Fabric Town and this is some of my haul from there. I'm just showing the ones that will probably make it into the uh, EPP quilt because the other, I got a lot of fabric. Um, but the rest of it will probably go into other projects. So this is the haul. We have pianos, aliens. Actually, this is probably not gonna go into EPP, but it is stunning. Sushi, bento boxes, animals, flamingo. And then this is very like 50s atomic um, cassettes and the, the wave. And then this is, these are all just like scraps. It will be more or less like random in the EPP quilt. So I'm just here. I have lots of like uh, stuff that I'm doing during the day, like going to Nepori Fabric Town. Then when I'm tired and I come back to the apartment, I just do EPP. So that is how my vacation is. Hey guys, so this trip was a little bit last minute, but I'm here in Guam. And uh, it's been amazing. I love it here. We've. Um, swam inside a cave, Pagat Cave. We also rode jet skis and all that. And obviously, when I get the chance in my hotel room, I work odd EPP. This is actually the only one I've made so far, but I make one everywhere I go. And it's my worldwide quilt and all that. Greetings to all and welcome to Thailand. Another check-in from a hotel room here in Thailand. I'm here for a couple of weeks. When I'm bored at night, I have my EPP to work on. I put it in this little box so that it fits in my suitcase. This is the thread, needles in here, and then the uh, things and the clippers. I didn't actually bring the whole quilt top to work on. It didn't fit. It's so big now that it won't fit in my suitcase. And uh, I also didn't really, I don't really remember like what all is left to do. So yeah, I'm just doing this and enjoying Thailand. I've seen elephants, I've seen monkeys. I touched a scorpion. It was horrible. Um, actually, the scorpion touched me. Yeah, and I've been eating lots of food and seeing temples and everything else like that, as well as work, because I am here for work. <laughs> I'm filming some footage to put in my YouTube channel. There's Gregory. No, no I'm not Gregory, I'm a local. Oh, here's a local. <laughs> you could be Gregory and still be a local. <laughs> How do we look? Awesome. Absolutely not. Except that one. Try this. about that those are squid oh yes so another check-in from Thailand because last night my hotel roommate slash co-worker and I went to the street market and obviously I was looking for fabric. I did not find any fabric. I still hope to find fabric in Thailand. Of course, I know they have it, but with my work schedule, I can't exactly go like wherever I want, whenever I want, you know what I mean? Like, so I have to look for it where I can. So I looked for it at the street market. I did not find any, but me and Greg stopped at this one booth that was selling stickers and patches. So I bought a bunch of patches. These are them. 
And so obviously the patches are gonna go on the quilt. I will just sew them right on. These are iron-on patches and I'll still go ahead and sew them by hand. Uh, there's two ice cream cones. And then I got three of these mustaches. Three mustaches that look like this. White mustaches. I wanted all the stitching on the quilts to be by hand. The only reason I did that it was because so much of it was already done by hand that I just said I, I want to make a quilt 100% by hand. So if I want to put these patches on, then I need to do that by hand too. And they are iron on, but I'll go over it with a needle and thread and it's going to be hard to do that because they are thick. I showed you my mixed spaghetti and now I'm here in Thailand to show you my McCheese sticks. They also have make chocolate milk. All right, so we've come back from Thailand. This is the rosette that I sewed in Thailand. And the crazy thing was, whenever I got back, I laid the quilt out to add the rosettes I made there, and I realized that it was already a rectangle. And I could have just been done with it. I guess I didn't pay close attention prior to going to Thailand. I somehow thought there was more to do. And so I've created more to do because I had no choice. I went back and forth on whether I was going to do this, but I just ultimately decided that I would sew this on, which means I now have to fill in the rest of the space up and down. And I've already started by adding some more like random blue, these small rosettes, and I will just have to fill in all the space you know, like this. So I've added several weeks to the project, which has already taken two years. But at this point, it's like, why not? All right, so we're pretty much back, and this is the quilt, top. And you know, the funny thing is, I was actually kind of finished, or would be finished, a few times, and uh, I just kept adding more. And you saw me in there saying I was gonna make a king-size quilt. At various times, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna put that in the final video because I'm not gonna keep going until it's a king, I'm gonna be done. Ultimately, I did make it a king size quilt. This, ironically, is the biggest quilt I've ever made, I think. That is ironic because it's also the only quilt I've hand pieced with a needle and thread and it would be the biggest quilt I've ever made too. I've actually had to order online the king batting 
This is the king size 8020 batting by Hobbs heirloom premium cotton batting. Wait, is it 100% cotton? No, it's 8020. Okay. I like 8020 better than 100% cotton. I mean, really, I buy all my batting online, but I don't normally buy king size. And then the challenge was 100% of this is sewn by hand with a needle and thread, which that even means the backing and the binding. And who would really want to sit there and piece? Normally you piece the backing because you don't have fabric wide enough. Who would want to do that? I'm not doing that. So instead I have a hack, which is this. This is a black flannel bed sheet, king size. I've had to order this on Amazon. And that's also like, I ordered a, a queen size one thinking, you know, the flat sheet is usually bigger than the mattress. So a smaller one might work. No, I had to get a king size bed sheet. And what we're gonna do is use this for the backing and then we'll have enough leeway on the edges that we can turn the edges over and stitch them down and that'll be the binding. And that's how I'm gonna do that. I've washed this, I've just pulled it out of the dryer. I prefer to work with everything that's been washed and dried first. For some reason, that's a controversial statement. There's no controversy. I just like to work with things that I've already washed and dried. That's all there is to it. I'm not telling anybody what to do in their craft room or, or getting involved in any drama. I'm just telling you what I prefer to do, and that's it. We don't even need to comment on it or nothing. So, I have a lot of work in front of me just to finish the quilt, which includes what I need to do for the final step for the top is take the papers out of the edge. This, for some reason, is kind of freaking me out because you don't take the papers out of the edge until you're done. But I am done, so I'm going to take the papers out of the edge. Once I take the papers out of the edge, I'm going to iron it from the back. See all these, like, seam allowance things? I want them to be perfect. I know that it's inevitable some of them are going to get flipped over. They're not all going to be perfect but as much as possible, I would like them to be perfect. So I'm gonna iron it and hopefully they stay down or at least like at least like 90% of them stay down, I hope. Then I have to go to my living room and pull up my rug that's in there because that's the only way I'm gonna get a big enough flat surface to work on to actually put the sandwich together. I'm gonna put the quilt face down, then I'm gonna spread this batting out over it. I'm gonna do it that way because I think that's my best bet for keeping these seam allowances where I want them flat. Sheet on top of that. Then I'm gonna stitch, hand stitch um, some basting, some basting. Then I'm gonna flip it over and baste some more from this side. I have some safety pins. I don't wanna put the safety pins on the back of it. That's gonna make it hard to take them out as I work. I like to take them out as I work. So they need to be on the front. That's what I'm gonna do. You know, the, a lot of the methods that I like to use are not gonna work for this quilt because it's too big. I originally planned to use the John Flynn quilt frame, but it won't fit on that. Another method that I considered trying was the pool noodle method, but again, the pool noodles are not long enough. So I'm just gonna have to deal, okay? That's the name of the game, we deal. I don't even have any quilt basting spray. I would prefer to use it too, but I don't have any. I'm doing it this way because that's just the way I have to do it. So let me get started. I'm gonna peel the papers off of the edge pieces. Oh, this is nerve wracking. Oh, and we have to square it up. I forgot, we have to square it up too. See how the edge is like this? All right, here I go.
right, guys, it's finished. I actually can't believe I finally finished it. This took me two years. Every single hexi is pieced by hand with needle and thread. The quilting is done by needle and thread. The binding is sewn on by needle and thread. The binding turned out really good. Actually, I can't believe I haven't done this before. It looks really good, hand sewn. Uh, I might do that from now on, or I might at least try it again. There's just like so much in this quilt. I mean, I was literally in the COVID quarantine twice. You saw it once on the video, but that happened another time as well. Traveling around Asia with this and the United States as well. Honestly, I am shook, disheveled and destroyed. So like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for coming and please come again.